House Democrats will likely hold a vote this Wednesday to advance the impeachment of President Donald Trump in the Senate. Senator Chuck Schumer sent a plan for the Senate trial to Majority Leader Mitch McConnell that includes calling administration officials to testify. More on all of that on TheHill.com. But first, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren are still leading the Democratic field. Action to stop climate change took a hit at a global conference, and President Trump has got to choose between two big constituencies. And no, we're not talking at all about Lizzo's Laker game appearance or the danger my mother might lose access to the Hallmark Channel when she comes to visit my house. I'm Jamal Simmons. Here's why you should care. Several 2020 candidates will be on the debate stage again on Wednesday. A lot has happened since the last debate. More presidential hopefuls jumped in the race, while a few others have gotten out. Some candidates have attacked each other, and some have even had beef with voters. As for the polls, former Vice President Joe Biden remains at the top, and a new poll shows progressive Senator Bernie Sanders is a top contender, treading closely behind Biden, with Elizabeth Warren still in the hunt. Here to talk more about this is Hill reporter Julia Manchester. Julia... We are here together for the first time. For the first time. time. We're going to break the internet. Yes. Yes, Exactly. (laughs) Uh, um, It's so great to watch you when you uh, host the show. Thank you. Happy to have you here to talk a little bit more politics. All right. So what is happening with these polls? Yeah. So what we're seeing happening in these polls is that Biden's lead has essentially solidified in the field. And we're seeing that he's continuing to be the front runner, despite Mayor Buttigieg maybe moving up in the polls a little bit and Elizabeth Warren starting to uh, fall a little bit. But she's still in the top tier. Um, We are seeing that Senator Bernie Sanders has um, started to climb up in that NPR Maris poll you mentioned Mm -hmm. um, in second place. And we know that part of this is because he has started to carry a lead with um, voters of color, which could be detrimental for Biden, who has been very popular with Latino voters and African-American voters. However, we know that Sanders has polled very well with young voters of color. So that's helping helping him out there. However, these polls are so important right now because it's the final stretch yeah. right before Iowa and New Hampshire and ahead of the debate on Thursday. It looks like another person is having an impact on these polls also, which is Mayor Mike Bloomberg. And there's some evidence that Bloomberg is pulling some numbers away from both Biden and from Buttigieg, who seems like his rise has sort of stalled out a little bit lately, too. Um, So Bloomberg is having a a bigger week this week, too. Right. It's interesting because Michael Bloomberg probably falls in that similar centrist establishment lane that Buttigieg and Biden are in. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, the narrative was, oh, Buttigieg is edging in on Biden's, you know, flag, uh, you know, standard bearing status as the establishment candidate. But now Bloomberg is coming in. However, I don't know if we'll necessarily see a bigger impact from Bloomberg. Bloomberg ahead of Iowa and New Hampshire because he hasn't been campaigning in those states. But this really much shows the power of his name recognition, the power of that ad buy that he's really put out in those Super Tuesday states. So I don't know if we'll necessarily see the full impact until after Iowa and New Hampshire, but Bloomberg's money and name recognition definitely having an impact. So you bring you bring up Super Tuesday, and we did see a poll from CBS News uh, that looked at uh, the Super Tuesday states. They did a battleground poll, and their poll, the order was Biden, Warren was sort of right behind him, behind about five points, Bernie behind her by about a few points, and then Bloomberg had gotten up to 5%, so Pete Buttigieg. So it was Mm -hmm. Biden, Warren, Bernie, Buttigieg, and then Bloomberg. So Bloomberg was sort of creeping up in some of those states. Maybe he's spending so much money. Uh, it could just be that money starting to have an impact. Absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of viewers will understand this. When I was home for Thanksgiving, I saw so many Michael Bloomberg ads, not only in Washington, D.C., but I saw them when I was in Ohio. I know my parents in Florida have seen them there. So it's really starting to have an impact. And we also know that he's very, fam- you know, a lot of voters are familiar with him. He is a big name. He has a media organization named after him. He's the former mayor of New York City. So a lot of this has to do with how voters are familiar with him. However, you know, it'll be interesting to see how Senator Warren and Senator Sanders respond to Bloomberg in these polls. We we know that they have really jabbed at him for his billionaire status, for not being um, as relatable with the voters. So I'm wondering if they'll look at these polls and say, okay, try to let's try to intensify our message against Michael Bloomberg. Absolutely. And let's talk about Bernie Sanders for just one second. Um, It does seem like 
Senator Sanders is, is sort of the steady as he goes candidate. He goes mm -hmm. up a few points, he goes down a few points, right. but he doesn't really move with the big swings that we've seen with some of the other candidates. Elizabeth Warren had that surge that was taking place in the early fall, and then she kind of dropped off with her Medicare for All flubs, but it seems like now maybe she's kind of hit that bottom. It seems like she hasn't really fallen in the last week or so, sort of evening out. So the question is going to be, I think, once we get past the holidays, things may get locked into place, mm -hmm. and then we get past the holidays, people come back in January, and they really get focused on these candidates. Absolutely. Remember, Senator Sanders, like you said, has been very consistent, and we know he hasn't necessarily garnered the same media attention that maybe a Buttigieg or a Biden has this cycle. However, he's been very under the radar, continuing to hold those rallies, continuing to do those that retail politicking in Iowa and New Hampshire. We know he did very well in Iowa, won New Hampshire last year. He's a senator from a neighboring state in New England, which definitely helps him in New Hampshire. And he's also very familiar with voters. A lot of voters voted for him or at least saw him on the ballot in the last presidential primary. So he definitely has that going for him. All right, Julia Manchester from The Hill. We'll keep watching you on thehill.com. Thank nice you. The longest ever climate talks wrapped up this weekend with lackluster results. The UN's 25th Annual International Conference of the Parties, or COP as it's called, lasted longer than expected but ended with the world's major contributors to climate change stalling on ramping up efforts to keep the effects of global warming at bay. According to NBC News, negotiators came to a compromise agreement that will see new carbon cutting plans ready to be negotiated at next year's talk set in Glasgow, Scotland. This after climate experts continue to issue warning after warning that countries must come together to act on the climate crisis. So what's the holdup here? Some diplomats dishing out the deeds say it's President Trump. According to a Politico report, negotiations fell through amid worries that Trump will win re-election next year and followed through on his promises to withdraw the U.S. from the Paris Climate Accords. It's no secret Trump is not interested in participating in international efforts to combat climate change, and this conference provided a good example of that. The Trump administration sent no high-ranking officials and did not hold any public events during the 25th COP, a stark contrast from previous administrations. So why should you care? The U.S. plays a key role in getting other world leaders on board with combating the climate crisis, but climate activists remain undeterred in their cause. Swedish activist Greta Thunberg tweeted the science is clear, but the science is being ignored. Whatever happens, we will never give up. We have only just begun. Meanwhile, President Trump attacks her on Twitter. President Donald Trump may be caught in a vice between two constituencies he sees as important to his political fortunes, conservative Jewish Americans and the military. Last week, the president signed an executive order extending civil rights protections to Jewish Americans on campuses and expanded the definition of anti-Semitism to include anti-Israel speech. While many Jewish Americans and free speech advocates have expressed discomfort with the order, this move is part of a stream of actions the White House would describe as pro-Israel. Then on Saturday, the president attended the annual Army-Navy football game where Army cadets at West Point and midshipmen at the Naval Academy flashed what appeared to be the upside-down OK sign, increasingly recognized as a symbol of anti-Semitic and racist hate groups. It is possible the students were making the symbol for some other reason, but civil rights and hate group watchers, including Jonathan Greenblatt of the Anti-Defamation League, raised alarms over the weekend. The ADL says the symbol forms the letters WP for white power. West Point and Annapolis officials are both investigating the matter, but so far we have not seen any statement from the president condemning the suspected anti-Semitic actions. Here's why you should care. If the students are found to be affiliated with or influenced by hate groups who have made this symbol popular online, not only will the military be forced to discipline them, the president will be caught in political crosswinds. Just a week after the president signed an executive order toughening anti-Semitic acts on campus, the first campus under review nationally is home to another constituency he's been courting. The president has made sure to ease the path of other military members suspected of violating the code of conduct. Which way does the president go from here? Either Donald Trump could risk offending a core group of allies in one direction or the other. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos. And head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.